Well, this is what we're doing. We're learning to build this baseline where even if I'm a little scared, I still like myself. Even if I'm nervous, I still like myself. I like who I am. And I want you to get really honest with yourself. Do you like yourself? And don't just answer quickly. Go in and, and when you sit down in front of a woman, what are your thoughts? Like literally go into a coffee shop, some place where there's attractive women and journal. What do you feel when you look at these girls? Do you feel yourself shrinking and going inward? Do you feel yourself opening? Do you feel you're worthy of meeting an attractive woman? Do you feel like they wouldn't let you know, write this stuff down? Because as you get clear about your thoughts, then you can start to do something about it. And you can start to change the way you feel before you even move. So in this video, I want to talk more about your baseline, who you're being before you take action, before you move. You see, intention, uh, if I want to create a reaction or a pro-action intention, I want to create a positive reaction, then uh, I need to start with a really solid baseline. I need to be enjoying who I am before I move or where I'm at. And my old teacher used to call it starting point, end point. You got to know your starting point and not only know it, you got to be comfortable with your starting point to move to your end point. If I want to move from California to New York, in, 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 or in this case, we're in Bucharest, so I want to move from Bucharest uh, to Brasov, um, then I need to know I'm in Bucharest, or I don't know what direction to go or where to go. I also need to not be frustrated with Bucharest, is preferably, or, or my starting point. If I'm frustrated where I'm at, I'm beating myself up for not being good with women, and, I need, and I'm, Brian said I gotta go create tension, so I gotta go create tension so I get a reaction from women, because ten, women like tension, and then I'm like sitting there and I'm <laughs> nervous, and I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna create tension, and then boom, I hit her with all this tension. It's, and it's not even good tension, it's nervous, it's anxious, it's staticky. It's not gonna feel very good. Same thing with moving, like if I'm moving, uh, literally, and I'm and I'm racing to get out of town, and I'm frustrated, and there's all this traffic, and I'm going to be stu uh, stumbling over myself, making mistakes, and maybe I get because I'm rushing, I'm not thinking straight, and I get halfway to brash off and realize I forgot something important. Yeah. Then you turn around and go back, and now you're more frustrated. It's the same idea with your mind. If you don't enjoy your body when you're sitting there, you're not relaxed, you're not comfortable. And uh, by the way, this is the beautiful Anna Maria. Hi. <laughs> Back to the video. <laughs> if you're frustrated with, with your starting point, you're frustrated with where you're at, you're not relaxed in your body, you're not comfortable, you're not enjoying who you are in the moment, then you've got a problem. What this boils down to is you believe you are broken and you need to fix something. You believe there's something wrong with you and you want to change it. And what is, I want to try on an idea. What if you're not broken? What if? Everything you're doing is to grow and expand, not fix yourself. What is a, is a tree, a sapling broken because it's little and not a big full grown tree yet? No. Is a baby broken because it hasn't learned to walk yet? No. There is no real broken. Broken is a relative concept. It's an idea we place in our mind. So the moment you start seeing yourself as complete and whole the way you are, um, and that now I just want to get better with women, it's so much easier to get better with women. So that when you create a proactive tension-based action, you're doing it out of a place of curiosity, intrigue, joy, pleasure. So now instead of anxiety, I need to fix myself. Hi, you know, I'm Brian, what's your name? Let's go on a date, you know? And I, wow, I created a lot of tension, it didn't work. You probably created too much or, or too little. Like you, hi, um, my name's Brian, I don't wanna bother you, um, but you know. Like, oh. yeah, exactly. <laughs> and both of those are coming from an uncomfortable baseline. So before you even move, before you act, can, can you enjoy where you're at? Can you enjoy your life the way it is? Do you like who you are? That's where the, the baseline comes from. And this works in so many other areas, goal setting, all kinds of stuff. So if I say hi to her from a comfortable place where I'm like, I like who I am. I think, I think it's great being me. And I'm like, hi, what's your name? Hi. Yeah, it causes a whole different reaction mm -hmm. because now I'm, I'm curious, I'm intrigued, I'm excited. I have access to all my emotions because I don't have fear on top of them. And if I do have fear, that's still normal. I might be a little scared to say hi to her, but I still like myself. It still feels different. So I could be a little nervous and like almost like, like I'm gonna go ride this roller coaster. I can't wait to get on it, excited, nervous, you know, gonna go jump out of a plane. I've never done that before, excited, nervous. Like, yeah, this is gonna be cool. And now I'm like, Hi, um, <laughs> I'm really nervous, but my name is Brian and there's a genuineness to it. Mm -hmm. And do you feel the difference? Yeah, and um, 
What I would like to add on top of what you just said is that uh, replacing your fears with something constructive, which is like courage or uh, yeah, courage, basically, uh, it will help you move, uh, move through the uh, experience and enjoy it, actually. Yep. Courage eats up fear. So as you develop more of a relationship to the emotion of courage, you actually use it to burn off fear. And then when the fear it goes away, after you've applied enough courage, like a torch to, to, to something that burns, then uh, what happens is what you're left with is acceptance of the moment and then just this calmness. And that's, that's why courage is such an awesome emotion to develop a really good relationship to. So that's a very good point. And so what we're, this is what we're doing. We're learning to build this baseline where even if I'm a little scared, I still like myself. Even if I'm nervous, I still like myself. I like who I am. And I want you to get really honest with yourself. Do you like yourself? And don't just answer quickly. Go in and, and when you sit down in front of a woman, what are your thoughts? Like literally go into a coffee shop, some place where there's attractive women and journal. What do you feel when you look at these girls? Do you feel yourself shrinking going inward? Do you feel yourself opening? Do you feel you're worthy of meeting an attractive woman? Do you feel like they would not, you know, write this stuff down? Because as you get clear about your thoughts, then you can start to do something about it. And you can start to change the way you feel before you even move. So to understand this better, I want you to think of a, something I created a long time ago. I had a client who would go out every day and he'd do all these approach exercises we gave him to do, but he wasn't really growing. He says, nothing's really changing. And he'd go out and he'd do stops and he'd do our highs and he'd do everything we teach in our videos and our courses. And I was like, why is he not growing? And I looked at him and I really thought about it and these realizations popped into my head. I said, why are you approaching women? Do you really want to? And he said, well, no. <laughs> so why are you doing it? Because you told me to. This is what I need to do to change, right? And I was like, ah, so here's the problem. So I created a little chart and uh, maybe we can, I don't know if we can get one on the screen here or not, but it basically started with avoid. A lot of guys are in avoidance. A lot of you just watching video after video, not taking any action because you're just completely in avoidance. Or maybe you tend to go out and talk to girls a day and you, send a, and you spend an extra hour on YouTube. Or you get out there and you end up talking to your friend the whole time and using him as a distraction. Uh, but we were, ha we were having this deep conversation. Or whatever comes up, you use it to distract from taking the actual actions. The next level of the chart was uh, need to, have to, should, I've got to do this. There's a sense of, I got to do this to change, which implies to the subconscious mind, the presupposition that presupposes to the subconscious mind, that I don't want to do it. I'm doing this because I have to. Brian told me this is the only way to change. My life won't shift. And that's stage two of this chart. So there's a sense that I have to do this. The next stage is want to, I want to do this. I have desire. Like I want to do this. I want it. Do you feel that the energy shifting as I go up the scale? There's a sense like I, you're still nervous. You're scared, but I want to talk to her. And there's a little bit of a push in that one. The next one is choice decision. Like I decided to do it. I have to, I'm taking a choice. I'm going to do this period. This is going to happen. Yes. And there's a penetrating energy in that. And then the last one is being. At the top of the scale, we have being. I am being somebody who talks to girls because I don't have to think about it anymore. It's in my subconscious mind. You want to get up to a minimum of want. You want to get out of a void and out of have to. And want is where you start growing from. Anything below want, if you keep doing the action, you're actually associating with pain. If you associate with pain enough, you actually get worse at the action and eventually you quit. And this is the big key to your baseline. If I look at her and I'm in a void, I'll be like, ah, you know, what's the point, you know? Or I might come up and be like kind of half there. Hey, how you doing? And it's it kind of like confusing. Then why are you here? It's like, what do you want from me? Do you want to talk to me? Exactly. And their, their, their conscious mind wants to, but their whole subconscious is like, I have to do this. And then the, the next one is I, ha I, I have to, is moving a little like there's a real have to. I need to do this. I need to change myself. So you start forcing yourself. There's a huge push in that. And the, but the greater part of yourself is heavy and angry. Like almost like you could be angry at her for making you do this, even though she's not, right? It's like, hi, uh, my name is Brian. You, know, you could be pushing, you could be pulling away, but there's a sense of work in it. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so we want to get you out of those two. And, the, and honestly, the easiest way to get out of those two is sometimes just to ask, you know, can I want to do this? Can I choose to do this? And a lot of times you'll feel a little shift in your body. If you just stop, relax for a moment, and ask that question. I mean, have to wait, can I make this my choice? Can I want to do this? Can I choose to do this? 
Sometimes you'll just feel this little shift. I'm like, I do. I actually want to do this, but my, I was just resisting myself. That is most of the time will at least move you up a notch on the scale and sometimes two notches to action. And then if you drop back down, you get back up again because you won't grow until you're in at least want to or choice. And choice is the best place to make these transitions from, which will eventually create the beingness. And so I want you to think about this whenever you're going out to take it. Like, like even write it down and carry it with you. Where am I at right now? And if you're down and have to, maybe you need to sit and meditate for a few minutes. Stop for a few minutes. Breathe, do some breathing, and then say, can I switch to, to choice? Can I switch to want to? Ah, that feels better. And, and that sense that as soon as you start, to, you'll notice it as a heavier or a lighter feeling. Um, now, when I talk about these levels, are you familiar with them? I know I've taught them a lot and you've been in the class. Yeah, I've, uh, I've heard you talking with them, about them. And uh, actually, as you were presenting them, I felt the shifts coming from them. I said, I do, that's where they, I do want to go to her, I do want to talk to her. That's where I felt the major shift in your energy. And it was nice to have that because it was a certainty and security in the way you said it, yeah. which was uh, very nice to feel. And so you can, f you literally feel the difference off of me. Yes, yes, and, yes. And so literally, because I, I tend to mimic the energies, I try to do that so you guys can learn. So I try to mimic each energy as I do it as best as I can. Um, and so, and she's literally feeling each shift and that's what's really important. Women are very sensitive to this stuff. And so a lot of times you guys think it's oh, there's something wrong with me, really not something wrong with you. It's your energy in that moment. It's how you're being, not who you are. OK, um, so this is the I think, in my opinion, one of the most important things when it comes to going out and doing physical practice, you've got to want to do it. I mean, a simple analogy, if I go to the gym every day and I lift weights and I think they're bad for me, I'm not gonna work, it's pointless. I just, I have to do this to grow. How long am I gonna be lifting weights for? How long until I hurt myself? You're going to hurt yourself because you're kind of pushing on it and not paying attention to the actual thing. Mm. And it's the same in every other aspect of your life. Exactly, and the moment I start choosing it and I'm excited, there's some turn on for it. There's I'm literally waking up my body for the idea of doing this. That's when all the realizations and understandings mm. are gonna come to me. And that's where all the progress is made. If you can get the choice, even above want, that's where all the progress is made. The power of a decision, a concrete decision that I have made, where you've taken all the victim out, I'm doing this because I've chosen it. That's what choice is, that's what decision is, I'm doing it, is really powerful. For your homework for this, to really understand the power of choice, which is where courage is, that's the level of courage, and understanding the emotions of courage, Read the chapter in Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich. If you can get the original version, get the original version, not one of these edited versions. Read the chapter on the power of a decision. It's a powerful chapter that really helps you to understand what a decision or choice really is and how powerful it really is and how it, 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 can, it, changed the whole, it can change the whole course of a world when somebody makes a powerful decision. Um, and that book really illustrates this, this power. But when somebody has to do something, ugh, I don't want I don't want students I have to drag along. It's the worst experience on the planet and, uh, and it sucks. So if I, again, if I'm looking at her and I'm in a void, again, remember that first eye contact drill I did in a, two videos ago where I was kind of numbed out. Mm, that's, that's a void. Hi, uh, what's your name? Where are you from? Or there's a sense I might be looking down a lot. Hey, how you doing? Uh, need to, I might be need to, have to, there'll be a sense of like anger in there or push or something inside me, conflict. And then, hi, my name is Brian. What's your name? Where are you from? You know, there's a sense I'm, I'm working at it. And then, uh, want to is I'm a little excited and want to can be good or bad. Let's take about halfway through the want to, if you, the lower part of want to can be rough. The upper part of want to is where you start to get exciting. So are you associating the want with good feelings or bad feelings? So as soon as I want, start associating with good feelings, I'm nervous. I'm like, hi, uh, sorry, my name is Brian. Um, I just really wanted to meet you. And there's that sense of excitement and energy. The excitement's a little bit of a state pump compensating for the fear, but it's fun. It's that roller coaster ride. It's good for me too. Yeah, <laughs> Better yeah. than the previous two ones. Yes, it changes fast. And then uh, choice is uh, is where you're a little more calm and a little more penetrating through your own fears and, cent and centered. And you're like, you're showing up. No, I've chosen being here. How you doing? My name is Brian. What's yours? 
Hi. And there's a sense of, of more grounding through the body. Okay. Did you feel that difference? Yeah, and it makes me actually want to be in that conversation with you and have that handshake when it's much more pleasant than the last last three ones. And uh, because it's secure, it's like, hey, this is me, and I'm I own me. Yes, beautifully said. This is me, and I own me. And being actually that's kind of getting into being already because being is the last one being i don't have to think about it anymore matter of fact i might be standing next to her and suddenly a conversation starts and we're just talking and i didn't even realize i started it or she started it or something happened mm -hmm. it's just part of who you are you talk to people you meet people you meet women people come up to you and go well how did you meet her i don't know we just started talking to each other mm -hmm. it's a natural part like yeah why, why wouldn't i she's she's a girl i'm a guy she's attractive you know girls like me <laughs> and that's that's being okay so it's it's a little different of an animal and you'll reach this point where that'll start happening. You'll just start enjoying talking to women when you meet them or people. And it's a beautiful state of, of being. And you do that with everything. Like this is true in all, everything I'm talking about is true. If you're building sales, if you're building a better relationship with your partner, your wife, it's all the same stuff. You know, you, you're, these, do you want to connect with your wife? Do you have to connect with your wife? Do you choose <laughs> to connect with your wife? You know, big difference, right? And. Uh, do you play with tension proactively with your wife or do you do you get reactive and all this stuff applies it's the same thing and so you can think of it we get, we're getting a lot more clients that are coming through that are married or uh, in relationships or some that are just online and i got a video not too long ago from a really sweet woman that said um her husband has completely radically shifted watching our videos and their relation they were about they i think they're heading towards divorce and now they're doing great um, and because he's applying all the principles in their marriage. This is powerful, guys. So think about your baseline. Think about how to establish a solid baseline. And in a future video, we're gonna go a little deeper into this and start talking about uh, goal setting and uh, how to start your day, which will help to establish an even better baseline, meditation process, a morning ritual, things like this. But uh, with that said, is there anything else, Anna Maria, you would like to say? Just have fun and enjoy yourself have fun and enjoy yourself that's really what it comes down to uh it reminds me of it's this old thing that it's so hard to figure this stuff out but then when you get it it becomes so easy you wonder why it was ever hard because now it's like oh it's part of me I, it just works mm -hmm. and that's ultimately it now you're just having fun so with that said um remember to comment below we want to see your comments and i was just talking to Anna Maria right before we started this video and she said for the next few weeks after this comes out she'll make sure to monitor the comment thread and respond to all your comments okay yes I will so get in there ask your questions and uh, and be real be polite be real and and because we really love your questions it means a lot also comment about future videos and what you want to see that's really important if you like the video make sure to like it subscribe to the channel if you haven't already go ahead do it right now subscribe hit the notification button so you get all the videos not just one once in a while but every video and uh, with that said remember only the confident really live see you in the next video